the music genre. Chad's assembled a mood board, a collage of rock and roll references for the drum and bass generation. Rockstar Boyd here um, brought in uh, a lot of his LPs here. The, the volume knobs on the amps, you know, cued into the caps. Uh, record boxes, wristbands, shopping bags, gift sets, stacks of records, everything relating back to music. Normally, in, when you walk into Bloomingdale's department store, they have the piece of paper they spray for you. Well, this one's their little ticket stub. But these pieces definitely go after a younger demographic. The bottle itself is obviously inspired by an LP. And within the glass mold, we have the ridges in here. It's distorted, it's pulsing, it's vibrating, it's moving. And the cap itself, we played off of a lot of ideas off of the knobs, off of amps, guitars, all of that. And then the girls is just, you know, the bright magenta, which again is so signature for Tommy now in his jeans line. We designed a resin sleeve that the bottle actually slides into. Okay. A wink and a nod to an, a physical LP and how you take them in and out of the sleeves. Get the, the um, consumer to actively participate, you know, mm -hmm. in the packaging. When you come out with a brand or a product that is so cool, um, the world attacks it. They all buy it. Every single one of them. And this one, we're expecting great things. Paris in midsummer. Jean-Paul Galland's promotional methods are rather more old school. The master perfumer entices journalists to the cool of his chateau. He wants to mention his new cologne, named after a hero of French literature, suave gentleman rogue Arsène Lupin. This one is, is important because... Uh, I'm 73, maybe it will be the last launching I'll do. I think it was the best What do you think of the big houses making the mass market fragrances now? I hate that. <laughs> you hate it? Well, I don't I like marketing, I hate it. Isn't this marketing what you're doing today? Well, doing today? it's not quite marketing I'm doing. It. It's not a panel test and things like that. Too. Panel testing or focus grouping are standard tools in the perfume industry, but they're not for the likes of Galan. At least, not yet. Jean Paul has chosen a successor. For four generations, the master perfumer has been a Galan. But when Jean Paul's son decided not to be the fifth, he had to look outside the family. Thierry Vassa is the man who will be king. Right now, he's just a regent prince. Oh, there are a lot of girls. So, I mean, you need at least two roosters in the coop today. Today it's his day, his special day. Vassa's task will not be easy. He must keep Galin relevant to the 21st century while celebrating the glories of the 19th. I am in a position which is absolutely unique because Jean-Paul has been taught by his grandfather. I have direct link of somebody who created his first fragrance in the 19th century. Uh, people think it's a heavy burden not to be blood-related, but when you have a lovable person like Jean-Paul Garla, the task is easy. The ladies of the press, and it's always the ladies who get invited to the big house, depart for the helipad and Paris, ready to file their copy.
few journalists are invited to the real inner sanctum. Every Wednesday, Thierry Vasser travels from Paris to meet John Paul at the Galin factory. The heir apparent has a constant reminder of the weight of family history next to his office. It's the lab of the greatest Galin of all, creator of Mitsuko, Le Bleu and Chalimar. Grandpa Jacques. This is the organ that uh, has been used by Jacques Galin. They are what he used to play with. And Mr. Galin was coming here and was making his formula. Some of them travel through uh, the time pretty, pretty good. It's a cool place where I like to sit. Here he comes. Here the boss. Look <laughs> through the shade, this kind. A young man. When he came to Galin, Thierry Vassa was a rising star. He could have gone anywhere, but Jean Paul Galin offered something more than just a job. I lost my father when I was a child, and as an adult, I have been uh, always growing at the shade of a mature man. And I used to say that since I find a dad at almost 50, I got my uh, childhood back. And it is, uh, well, what I'm telling you is very personal actually, but <laughs> to me, uh, be back uh, in a loving, respecting, uh, admiring relationship is uh, fascinating and make me young also. It's very weird, but it's uh, nevertheless how I feel. The relationship is good for Jean-Paul too. He still has a role. He still commands respect. The baton is being passed, but slowly. Thierry, I like him very much. And he's uh, very gifted and I uh, think he will do a very good job. And we get on very well together. And th that's the most important thing. York, Veronique Gabay Pinsky and her team have labored through the sweltering summer. They have a bottle prototype for the new Tommy Hilfiger scent. The next matter is the actual liquid, known in the trade as the juice. Veronique has brought together a two man dream team. We've asked two perfumers, very young. They've never been involved in the industry for the last 20 years. Mm. You're simply they're too young to have done that. They are part of that generation, and they're both very interested in music. Hot but cool, Aurelien Guichard made play for Comte des and unforgivable for Sean John. You have to be a bit naive and innocent to try things that people tell you it's not possible. And maybe you'll create the best fragrance of your life. Jan Vasnia wrote the formula for Marc Jacobs' Lola. 
he and Guichard have just months to produce countless minute variations on a theme. So just how do you create rock and roll as a smell? Patchouli. It was very much used uh, in the past by hippies. And the rose is probably the most universal way to express femininity. We thought that was rock and roll for us. When we worked the rose with the patchouli, we thought that was rock and roll. As their juice develops, the perfumers constantly compare it to the latest releases. Veronique writes ten commandments for all her perfumes. Number one, thou shalt smell fantastic. First time that you access a fragrance, you're going to do it because of the idea, the uh, advertising campaign, the bottle design. And then, you know, what's happening is that the second time, the third time, the fourth time, and hopefully the tenth time you're going to buy the bottle is because of what's inside. Quite frankly, a fragrance cannot exist if you don't have the amazing quality in the bottle. There are still several versions of the scent. Wendy Patel monitors the market for Veronique's team, watching for shifts in the public's tastes. Maybe we could try to bring the patchouli up just a little bit more, just so that you kind of get it more so with the rose. Patchouli, a soft-leaved relative of mint from Southeast Asia, is the summer's must-have ingredient. Kind of what gives it like a sexiness. It's, you know, mm -hmm. it's... Okay. Like we're fun, we're fruity, we're juicy, we're... But it could just have a thread of that a little bit more, so... The process involves infinite, minute changes to the formulation, getting them assessed going back to the lab. The clock is ticking. The juice has to be ready for the pre-Christmas publicity drive. The stakes are high. Hilfiger is famed for two big sellers, both well respected by the perfume trade. Loud has a lot to live up to. Manhattan is in the midst of a heat wave when the day arrives for the client to smell what Veronique and her team hope will be the winning formula. So it's a big day because we're meeting Tommy. This is the juice, this is the soul and the core and the DNA of the project. So really we're at the very end of the process. Tommy Hilfiger arrives 15 minutes late and is due somewhere else in half an hour. Because we didn't want to go through traditional market research for this project. We wanted to keep the creative process very creative. Really, the, uh, the juices have been universally appreciated and in a way that's very interesting for us because it's not like I like it it was immediately I love it what is it I want it so it's it's interesting is this the way the bottle is going to look yeah because when it's filled with uh, fluid it's going to look a bit different and these are still models yeah they're not production this is plastic still yeah. it's not still acrylic. acrylic it's that fine balance of it pulsing but legibility you know What does it really say? I mean, you know what it says. Mm -hmm. We all know what yeah. it says, but, but what does it really say? Mm. And if it's OU, yeah. it's not going to resonate and mm. connect back to the advertising. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we'll make sure it's, uh, it's there. I think that we can achieve that. So your I will get into the L and the D more so. Mm -hmm. And uh, the box have turned out to be really cool. So it really gives you the feeling of uh, like a real... Um, CD case? C well, yeah. Uh, and what we'll have a side here that will open, flip out, so the consumer can slide.